Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, I'm going to introduce Chapter 5, one of the big chapters of this uh, semester. So if we scroll on down, I'm going to start, I'm just going to look at the table of contents. So here are the course notes by chapter. If you go to the uh, this link here, uh, this will bring up the all the chapters in one document. Uh, this has 555 pages and uh, at, the advantage here is that we get to see the table of contents. So I'm going to scroll on down, um, we talked about all these things, and in part three under experimental designs and observational studies we're going to dig into chapter five. So chapter four gave a very brief introduction to thinking about analysis of variance as a one-factor design and in chapter 5 we're going to extend that in an experimental setting. So just to walk through the ideas and then I'll break each of these sections into its own video. The We start by uh, thinking about analysis of variance. Okay? So we've got a one-factor one design so we have one population out there and we're going to sample individuals from that population and then randomly assign them to treatments. So say we had three different treatments. Now our goal is to ask, is the response to these three treatments different? And that's an analysis of variance model. Is the mean for these three groups equal or not? Okay, so we're very familiar with that. That was actually chapter five from last semester. Um, the first section here is to extend that idea for when it is important to block. So there's a saying, block what you can, randomize the rest. And the blocks here are to control for nuisance variability that you can't control, but that you can keep track of. So for example, say you are a biology graduate student and you are uh, working on a deadline and doing a bunch of experiments. So you go into the lab early in the morning. It's cold, uh, but it's bright and you're doing some biological experiments there. And then you go to class, you come back after lunch, it's warmed up, it's still, it's very bright now and you do a set of experiments again and then uh, you you have, go have dinner, uh, you get some work done, then you come back in the evening, it's dark, uh, it's starting to cool off, and you do a third set of experiments. So a lot of experiments in chemistry, biology, they are, depend on temperature, light, maybe even by um, barometric pressure in terms of uh, gas exchange in plants. Uh, doing photosynthesis, and so in those cases, you've now you've now done your set of experiments three times. You think you have three replicates. However, there's this nuisance, uh, additional treatment in a way of whatever the environmental conditions were, and so the block is those environmental conditions. Now you don't you didn't take measurements for how light how bright it was or how what the temperature was or what the barometric pressure is or all, all a big host of other um, measurements that you could have taken that could affect your experiment. However, you know that you conducted all the different experiments, all the treatments during each of those three time windows. And so you have randomized say plants or whatever or insects into the different control the tre different treatment conditions morning even morning noon and night right and so now you just need to block each of those treatment window or each of those experimental windows you did one in the morning one in the afternoon one in the evening okay and so by doing that it's possible that maybe in the daytime when it was warm and bright things happened fast Whereas in the morning, things happened um, moderately slowly, say, because it was sort of cold, but it still had a lot of light. And in the evening, maybe things happened even slower because it was dark and 
cold. Okay, and so by blocking, uh, you're going to reduce the between block variability. That is sort of the overall effect of doing something in the morning, noon, and night. And by controlling for that variability between blocks, you'll better see the signal of how the different treatments within each block compare. So that is the first section, the randomized block experiment. So after that, we're going to extend the one-factor design of analysis of variance to having multiple factors. For example, uh, we're going to have, se well, we'll have several examples. For example, the beetle insecticide. I think here we've got uh, different types of insecticides that uh, are good for killing beetles, uh, and we'll have different dosages. And so we'll be able to experimentally control both which insecticide we use, but also how much. So sort of a low, medium, and high level of insecticide. And by doing that, we've got two controllable factors. And we want to understand how does the dosage affect insect uh, beetle survival time? Does it also depend on which insecticide there is? And eventually, and soon it We'll, we'll be asking about interaction. That means, does the difference in survival time over the different dosages, low, medium, to high, do those survival times differ based on which insecticide type we use? So maybe for one insecticide, um, there's a big jump when you go from low to medium but then not much a jump when you go from medium to high. But for the next insecticide, maybe there's a nice steady progression from low to medium to high in terms of the survival time. So we'll look at an example like that. We'll look at a second example having to do with uh, voltages for batteries. So that will be a really key idea here about interaction. Uh, we'll look at uh, checking assumptions, which is going to be really straightforward. You're going to uh, cruise right through this. You're all getting very good at this in class. And then we'll look at one example when we have non-constant variance and uh, ways of um, um, addressing that issue. We haven't actually had very much uh, experience yet with non-constant variance. Um, okay. The next section deals with uh, what to do with multiple comparisons. So once you find that there are differences between treatments, then we want to ask, just as we did in analysis of variance last semester, which treatment combinations differ? And we'll do that both with a balanced design, where we have equal sample sizes for each treatment group, or an unbalanced design, where we have different numbers of observations for each group. And there'll be an important um, software-related idea there. So then we'll look at an, ex an unbalanced example of that. And finally, what I think of is perhaps one of the most important sections, which uh, I don't actually do explicitly in the notes, but I think we will spend a little bit of time in class doing this, um, as well as I'll do this in the lecture video also, is we'll look at how to write these model equations down and interpret the coefficients of these models. This is such a key idea, uh, especially when you have multiple factors and especially when you have interaction. Uh, it's such a key idea. This is going to, if you understand how to write down a model equation and, it, and correctly interpret the model coefficients for an interaction model, you will, you know, you know, uh, some of the most key, fundamental key ideas about doing multiple regression, and you'll be far ahead of your peers. Uh, it's it's uh, not very complicated, but uh, it's very important. And the people who don't understand this uh, don't uh, interpret their models correctly, and so can make big mistakes when it comes to inference. So we'll look at that for a simple one-way ANOVA, just like uh, from last semester, well, a two-way ANOVA with additive 
an additive model, meaning there's no interaction. And then finally, we'll see what interaction does uh, to that model equation and how to interpret those that interaction model. So that this is a big chapter. I think we're talking about 70, 70 pages. Um, but there's a lot of great material in here, and this is going to make you a really great data, data analyst uh, by understanding the content in here. So I will break this into several lectures. I will probably skip over some detail that I will encourage you to read on your own. And then I'm going to uh, spend most of my time uh, getting deep on, I think, the concepts that require a little more explanation and that I think of being really critical. All right, join me for the next video.